There's an interesting story in the Bible that talks about two ladies who spent time with Jesus, Mary and Martha. When Jesus came to visit their home, Martha spent time really in the kitchen, busying herself on tasks, while Mary, she sat at the feet of Jesus to learn, to grow. The difference between the two women, Mary decided to engage on vision, to develop herself, to think about transformation, while Martha engaged on tasks. Very much like this conference, you have chosen what is better. You have chosen to engage on developing yourself, on growing. Hopefully, you will be inspired from yesterday and today's speakers to engage on matters of transforming Africa. You have chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from you. Aruma Ote, our keynote speaker yesterday, asked us what is our goal for this conference? Is it just to meet and talk? Hopefully not. On Monday, your challenge is this. Be like Mary. Think about what you have learned, what you have soaked in from these amazing speakers, and think about what you're gonna do differently from Monday. Don't let this moment pass. Think about how you're gonna to contribute to Africa's sustainable economic development based on your role. You do not have to be a CEO to transform Africa. You just have to have a transformational mindset and a CEO mindset. And you must continuously learn, continuously engage, and continuously network. So welcome to day two. We're very happy to be here. My name is Nuru Mugambi, and I'm so happy to be your host for day two. Nuru, you have inspired and re-inspired me again. I will do exactly what you said on Monday. Delegates, speakers, organizers of the conference, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Let me begin by thanking the KBA for extending an invitation to me for this important conference. I'm truly pleased to return as a speaker after the inaugural one in 2016. It is an honor to be in the presence of such an esteemed panel of speakers and delegates from Kenya and the rest of the continent, albeit virtually. When I pondered over what I would talk about today, I thought I would tell you a story of a girl born in Kahama, a village in Tanzania. The girl was the last born in a family of three children. At the tender age of eight, she lost her father, leaving her mother to look after her and her older siblings. The young girl attended Kahama Primary School where she would walk to school in slippers and occasionally bare feet. She thereafter proceeded to Mwanza Secondary School where she sat for her O levels. Throughout her primary and secondary school education, she would help her mother at the little duka every day after school and during school holidays. Many a time, her mother would send her to make purchases and negotiate credit terms with suppliers through which she honed business skills early in life. Upon completing her secondary school education, her mother sold off their home, their duka, and her priceless wedding jewelry to send her and her siblings for further studies in the United Kingdom. Thank you, mom. The girl later qualified as a chartered accountant and would go on to work for one of the big five accounting firms as an auditor in London. She then proceeded to specialize as a tax consultant in the oil industry and worked for two leading oil companies in the UK. After what was to be a 25 year stint in the UK, 
the girl, now a matured married woman, answered to a calling deep inside her heart to return to her continent of birth and joined the finance department of a local bank in Kenya. As you may have now gathered, the small girl from that village in Kahama is now addressing you as the group CEO of leading regional bank in East Africa. My journey has been nothing short of a roller coaster. There have been difficult times, just as there have been very fulfilling days. Being a woman and a woman of color in the United Kingdom meant that I was in the minority of the minority in the early 70s. There were many professionals who did not accept me simply because I was a woman of color. I remember working at an audit firm in a supervisory role and my peers, all of whom were men, did not take me seriously or value my opinion. Instead, they looked down on me because I was different from them. They saw me as a lesser person and didn't want to include me in their all boys club. It was definitely a tough time. But what I found is that when you keep doing what you're supposed to do and you work hard at your job, you can't be ignored for long. Eventually, people will have to start paying more attention to you. I didn't let these negative experiences hold me back. On the contrary, they strengthened my resolve to relentlessly pursue my career objectives. Consequently, I can only speak from what I have been through and share some advice to all the leaders listening to me today. I call you leaders because I truly believe there is inherent leadership in every woman. So here go my tips based on my experience. One, don't work with the mentality that there is a glass ceiling for women. This is not the case anymore. With the hard work and determination, you can achieve anything. I am a sheer testament to that. I broke this invisible barrier over two decades ago in a male dominated industry. You don't have an excuse. Be fearless and unapologetic about your ambition. When I was appointed CEO of DTB, there were some naysayers who said I couldn't do it. Remember that as a leader, expectations will be high, whether you're a man or a woman, but it is better to try and fail than not to try at all. Believe in yourself and keep pushing forward. Don't take a position that are offered to you just to feel a quota of gender inclusivity. It is not your right to be in these positions just because you are a woman. Work hard and earn the positions you deserve. Keep working on yourself. As you go about your job, find that extra thing you can do and constantly equip yourself with new skills. Learning never stops. The Africa that we all desire requires 
full involvement of both men and women. We need to join hands to make this a reality. I wish to pay tribute to the men who continue to support the gender parity agenda, and particularly those who are amongst us today. It is the contribution of women that is tied to the growth of Africa. Gender parity is no longer the next, but the current, the current frontier for global growth. My key leadership lesson is the constant need to stay agile and resilient. The financial services industry is an industry that technology has impacted significantly. And while we all knew the digital age was here, the last six months has advanced that more than anyone could have imagined. COVID-19 has spurred innovation, increased investments to access digital financial services and address increasing concerns about cybersecurity. The pandemic joins an endless list of disruptors to the industry. Over the last few years, we've been grappling with the competition from outside the industry, including fintechs. Today, even media networks are venturing into the, the payment space. Banks are finding themselves thinking beyond profit and striving to remain relevant in an ever-changing world. The secret for navigating this is to always take a longer term, 360 degree view of the industry as disruption might be coming from the least likely quarters. We must constantly think beyond what the customer is going to need now and into the future to stay ahead and relevant. This is the time to consider and pursue strategic partnerships with fintechs and the like. Going forward, as we live with COVID-19, the industry and the business community has to align its needs to those of other stakeholders. In closing, I want to emphasize that with the fourth industrial revolution upon us, we cannot afford to leave anyone behind. We have to consistently promote talents, ideas, innovations, and initiatives from both genders. To quote an African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. We must keep the economy and the society moving forward for a stronger future together. Thank you.